so what would you like in a flashlight? Now, for a second, let's pretend we're asking the internet. I don't know, more specifically, say the typical commenters under a news story. Okay, let's see. Well, uh, it needs to be at least a thousand lumens. Uh, okay. Have a uh, USB charging built in. Mm, okay. Needs to have a few tin options. Mm, okay. Needs to be small. Mm, okay. And then someone else says, I like larger lights because of the 18650 battery. Longer run times, idiot. Okay, okay, now let's keep it a little civil. Uh, at least four modes. Mm, okay. Four modes isn't enough, jerk. I need it to be like infinity brightness levels. Where's the foam four mode guy at? I want to kick him and his whole family in the face. Oh, okay, okay. Let's take the internet out of this one and talk for a minute about the new updated through night 2C version 3 2017 model, which is an update of the through night Neutron 2C V2. Now it's V3, see? Because it has a new UI where you select the brightness level you want, and, you know, maybe not what your microwave tells you. It has USB charging, includes a 3400 milliamp hour battery, adds strobe, which is the main reason approximately one dude is upgrading, and has a handy LED on the button telling you if your battery needs charging. And it also whispers secret mission orders in your ear while you sleep. Cool. The Neutron is made from aluminum, has a glass lens, can use either an 18650 battery, two CR123A batteries, an 18350, and one or two 16340s. Since the operating voltage is 2.7 to 9 volts, a single 3.0 volt CR123A battery probably won't work. I didn't test it, but you can do that in your review. The Neutron 2C V3 uses a Cree XPL V6 emitter, and you can get it in a cool or neutral white version. I have reviewed the cool white version here because I didn't specify and that's what they sent me. It comes with two spare O-rings, a manual, a lanyard, a pocket clip, a 3400 milliamp hour protected cell, a holster, a micro USB charging cord, and a cardboard box, and that's it. You need to provide your own USB charging brick, like from your cell phone or whatever. Let's see the dimensions here. First, let's see the weight with and without the battery with two different battery types. Smaller battery is lighter, but with shorter run times. Larger battery is longer run times, get it? Then the sizes of the light itself. The 18650 configuration makes the light sort of long because it has that USB charging circuit integrated. So it's longer than some flashlights that I have. I've been personally carrying it in the 18350 or shorter configuration because I use the light less during the day and it's lighter in the pocket and I just charge it at the end of the day if I need to. First up, be the output modes. My estimated output figures in a through nights are on the screen. First is Firefly. Sometimes certain manufacturers call it Moonlight. It's a good level depending on your opinion. I like it just a bit lower. Then you get low, which is 14 lumens. It's a bit of a jump from Firefly. And from there it scales all the way up in digital steps mimicking an analog type brightness adjustment. They're spaced so close together it's hard to see the steps when it dims or brightens, but maybe you can see it here. Then on the high end of the scale, after it's gone up and down a few times, is high. Then is turbo. And then there's a strobe. Okay, the UI. The UI is simple and easy, and if you don't think it's intuitive, then there's probably something wrong with you. Now again, you can remove part of the battery tube if you're using a smaller battery, or the longer one. I'll go with the longer one. Um, okay, the battery is now in. Press and hold for access to Firefly, or Moonlight, or whatever you call it. 
Firefly can only be accessed from off and can't be saved into mode memory, just like Turbo. Okay, so to get to the regular modes, you either press and hold when it is in Firefly, after you've released it from Firefly, or you can just press once while it's off. Once in your regular brightness operation, just press and hold and it goes up. The brightness level blinks at the top end, then it goes back down and it blinks three times at the bottom end. Whenever you release your finger, that's where the brightness stays. And when you turn it off and back on, the last mode you used in the infinity brightness changing middle mode, again, not Turbo or Firefly, it saves it. Also, say if you release it somewhere in that infinity dimming, that's what they call it, it's not really infinity. Um, when you press and hold again, if you don't turn it off, it goes the opposite way you were going before you stop. So if you were going up, you release the button for a second, and then pressed it down and held it again, you would go down. See how that works? To get to turbo from any time from on or off, which is about double the brightness of the top of the brightness scale, double click. Yep, okay. To get to strobe, double click while in turbo, or you could do four rapid clicks from off. The button has an LED indicator in it. Blue means above 3.2 volts. Flashing red is three to 3.2 volts. Red is 2.8 to 3.0 volts. If the battery voltage drops to 2.8 volts, it shuts off. Okay, how about that charging? I did a test for that after I did a runtime test. So assume from about 3.0-ish volts to 4.2-ish volts, that's how long this took. And I used the included battery. You can use other batteries because it doesn't use a proprietary cell, but I used the one included. When charging anything below 4.2 volts, the indicator is red. So 4.9 volts, it stays red. A lithium ion battery fully charged is 4.2 volts, but you already knew that, right? It takes a little over five hours to get the included battery to a fully charged state. I took the battery out and tested the voltage afterward, and it was a nice, safe 4.2 volts. Also, if you were to use the light without the battery, it works as a low-ish one-mode light with just the micro USB plugged into the head and no battery. I knew someone would ask me that, so that's why I tested it. Okay, run times. For turbo, I used the included protected 18650 3400 milliamp hour battery and then an unprotected 750 milliamp hour keep power 18350. First the 18650, which makes up, you know, the light a little bit bigger and it gives you longer run times. Turbo. Turbo begins a steady slow drop in brightness over the course of the runtime. The lux meter in the frame is there for you to see the drop in brightness and not necessarily to really assign a lumen value to it. You get a total of about 1 hour, 55 minutes of runtime from the included 3400 milliamp hour 18650 battery. Now turbo with the 18350. Expect a much shorter runtime. Again, you see a steady but sharper drop in brightness with this battery. Both this and the 18650 have the same operating voltage. But the main difference between the two batteries is size and the capacity or stored energy for you new people to lithium ion batteries. You get about 19 minutes of real world continuous runtime. If you aren't near a charger, you either should use a lower mode when using this sort of battery, or just stick with the included 18650 if the added bulk isn't a big deal to you. Ending voltage on this unprotected cell was about 3 volts. I did not test the light with two unprotected 16340 cells, so I can't say with certainty that if the 2.8 voltage cutoff works well for those cells. So dividing 2.8 would be 1.4, and a 1.4 volt lithium ion battery is not considered a good voltage. Although logically, I don't know why a person would use two 16340 cells over the included or your own 18650 cell. Same amount of length, I'm not sure why. Okay, now high mode with the included 18650 battery. You get a subtle drop in brightness for the first 20 minutes, then it stabilizes for the next hour or so then starts dropping again around an hour and 50 minutes. Then the light starts dimming way harder over the next 50 minutes or so and shuts it down. I didn't test the lower modes because it's pretty unlikely we'd select the same brightness level. Or is it? Okay, beam shots. I'll compare it with some other everyday carry size lights I reviewed on this channel in my backyard. I'll put some links at the end of the video to those other reviews if you'd like to watch them. If you don't, well, I guess that's not my problem, is it? You'll see my estimates with the lights, all set to their maximum output. First is the through night. It's a cool white tinted light with a large hotspot this far out. 
I wouldn't call it a throwy light, but it's definitely not the floodiest everyday carry size light in this size. Okay, now the slightly throwier Zebra Light SC600 Mark III HI, neutral white. It's a more neutralish tint and a bit more throwy. At equal distances, lights with higher candela usually have smaller, brighter hotspots than ones with less candela, as you just see here, usually. Now, the through night before moving on to the Olight S2 Copper is here, and here's the Olight S2 Copper. Also a cool tint, but with a much wider hotspot because of that TIR optic. It's a bit more compact than the through night but heavier because um copper back to the through night do 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 now the astro lux k01 which is also copper the flashlight review i did right before this but you remember that because you watch all of my videos right all of them sorry that wasn't a hidden message it also uses an xpl emitter but this one is tinted much warmer than the through night Sort of similar candela in both lights though. Okay, let's go to a brighter light. About a thousand lumens brighter to be exact in the Olight R50 Seeker. Remember that one? Yeah, I've been watching your reviews for a long time. Cool, it was last year I think I did that. This should give you an idea if you think you need something with more lumens. Also a cool white light. Different emitter though. Now all of these flashlights you have seen have Cree emitters, just different Cree emitters as do nearly all the flashlights I've ever reviewed on this channel. A few have different ones, but mostly it's Cree because Cree make the best. You know, mostly. All right, let's do a much throwier light in the Convoy C8. This light is a little less brighter overall than the through night, but the beam can travel much further. You're like, well, how's that possible? Well, watch my difference between candela and throw video for more information on that. Okay, now let's do uh, the basement thing where we have the maximum modes of this light and the other through night I reviewed, the Archer A1 V3, in case you have that one. And want to see the brightness difference upgrade. Remember, the two Ds are for a double dose of pimping. You see, a pimp's love is different than that of a square. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, uh, okay, yeah, wrapping it up. The through night is an excellent light for everyday carry. Its versatility from its deep carry pocket clip to its holster, if you're one of those people, and its ability to use different sizes of batteries should please most people. Not all, because this is the internet. It has a nice user interface. It's pretty intuitive. In fact, I don't really hear people talk about through nights as having bad user interfaces. Most people like through nights user interfaces and I can't talk. It's waterproof to IPX8 standards, so shallow submersions temporary up to two meters, and no visible PWM was detected by my eyes or my camera on any of the modes when using lithium ion batteries. That doesn't mean it doesn't use it, it just means that you or I or my camera will not be able to see it unless you're bionic. If you like this review, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Through night provided this light for review. Thanks for watching.